Thank you very much. So the purpose of this uh, uh, brief uh, talk is to give, uh, especially to the coordinators of the revenue, uh, some uh, experiences. So to share the what uh, we have been doing, uh, what we are doing also in Buji One, hoping that will help uh, in uh, boosting uh, the, the writing uh, of the revenue, especially when dealing with big groups. Because uh, writing a, a review uh, to me should be like, uh, I mean, writing a review in a group uh, to me is like doing a puzzle. When uh, whether everyone knows what to do and knows uh, perfectly a topic on what is writing and do it. This is this is perfect and seems really smooth, a smooth path towards uh, the submission. But actually. Uh, it's not like that. So everyone will contribute, but there is a need of someone managing this group. Usually uh, a coordinator in this case, in our free fuse um, uh, groups. So this coordinator, after a moment of enthusiasm, uh, being uh, the, of this uh, duty, responsibility and honor in uh, coordinating a review, can easily turn uh, in something more doubtful on uh, how to proceed. Uh, as, uh, for example, as we have seen uh, also this morning with many questions uh, about uh, uh, how to manage some details in um, about the reviews. So um, where to start uh, to go uh, towards our submission? A suggestion. Uh, uh, should be to, for example, define a common structure. So to have really in mind uh, what is the topic and based on the literature available, on the other reviews available, know what is our target. So how do what you want to focus our review? Then uh, uh, gather all the relevant literature. So gathering really downloading papers in order to be available to all the uh, writers, then uh, writing and hopefully uh, submit uh, our work. So um, in, uh, in our case in Buji One, to start defining a common backbone, we did a meeting like this one, but in Barcelona last year. And uh, it was, uh, to me, it was really helpful to, so each coordinator went back home with uh, a backbone. So something, some common, guidelines uh, for our papers uh, um, on the topic of uh, uh, the physiological response of plants to water stress. So in this case, uh, then uh, of course, uh, um, also to define a common backbone and then all the water, all the work uh, after, um, varies uh, really if you are dealing with a small group or a big group, because I have, we have as we have seen uh, this morning also, small groups are really efficient in organizing, uh, but uh, all the work is uh, on the shoulders of few people. While big groups uh, are really nice because the, the work assigned to each one is really, I mean, is, is smaller, should be smaller, but the organization could be a mess, especially when people is not uh, replying or is busy with other things and is not active actively involved. Then uh, um, about the, the gathering of, of the, the, the literature, uh, in our different reviews, we have used the two different approaches. So the first one, like uh, chronologically, is not first because of anything, but because uh, it was the first here, is uh, the one that we can uh, say as traditional one. So each writer is in charge of doing its own uh, literature review and writing the paragraph, uh, the topic assignment. So in this case, uh, should be useful if you, for the coordinators, if you are planning to uh, adopt an approach like that, to define some common uh, methods for data collection in order to to guarantee that each one, each writer can get as much relevant literature as possible. So this can have um, yeah, pro and cons. 
Then another approach that I would like you to share with you, what we have done uh, in the Apple and Fair Review, was uh, first uh, to use a unique, uh, to, to, to start with, so we used a unique uh, Scopus search with some uh, general keywords, with the idea to have all the possible materials on that topic. Then we had uh, to download all the relevant paper of this month <laughs> that was uh, not 1,000 of papers, but uh, something less. And in that case, each uh, uh, people downloading articles was in charge to uh, discard all the papers that were not relevant. Because although we inserted Apple, Fair, and Irrigation, we found uh, papers on medicine, uh, papers on uh, the apple snail, uh, and so on. So something really out of the topic. In this case, we, we were able to do a second filtering. Then in the end, we end up with, with a shared folder with uh, some hundreds of papers that were screened with R. So Francesco developed a script to look inside the papers to recognize some keywords that we previously identified, for example, shoot growth, photosynthesis, and so on and so forth. And in, so what we have back was uh, on, uh, a table that I will show you in a few slides. So, of course, uh, the scope of search uh, was not easy to decide because combining different keywords, uh, you have back uh, different numbers of papers as a result. So we tried uh, uh, to find a balance between big numbers and relevant material. So you can see, for example, that if we only put uh, Apple, pear, and water, we have more than 7,000 possible papers that are really a huge amount of work if you want to at least screen uh, or check everything. So there is the need to find compromises on that. Then, uh, uh, however, so these methods, uh, I cannot say, have some negative aspects. So for example, um, you cannot get uh, all the articles. So, of course, for some reasons, you, you exclude some very old papers uh, that, for example, cannot be screened with R only because our printed papers can, for example. So you have some, uh, some issue with that. Anyway, we found some papers that were not relevant. So also in this case, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit annoying. And uh, of course, uh, I, I have to admit that it's not exhaustive. But uh, about it has also some positive aspects, this approach, because uh, it's a more unbiased search type in the sense that uh, you get all the materials. So, because I don't know, in, in certain scenarios can happen that one starts from the literature that he already knows. So maybe it's looking for certain authors and maybe in a certain way, excluding other materials. Because also we cannot, we, we have to have in mind that uh, maybe the time that each writer can dedicate also to the literature review and to all the process could be limited. So for reasons of time, unfortunately, maybe you can have the right time to do a complete literature review. Then uh, the other positive aspect of being a big group we divided the effort of downloading uh, 1,000 papers among 30 people. So it resulted in an affordable number of papers to check and to download. And uh, also it was very interesting that in that case, thanks to the network, uh, we had uh, access to different uh, um, websites uh, and uh, editors. So we were able to gather and to download more materials that one from one university maybe cannot have access to, to all the resources. So this is uh, interesting. Only pin, I would like to pinpoint that uh, the share folder with all the material, it's very nice to have, to have it shared among us, but shouldn't be 
like advertised and make available to everyone because of course for problems with copyrights and so on. So um, after that, uh, so we we had uh, an, a shared folder to to work together, and uh, we um, we try to to have a unique naming of the files in order to uh, be able to to get everything. A, a suggestion, for example, we used having a unique Scopus search. We used the article number because the number. 250 was the same papers for every one of the participants. And then putting the year, the first author and the title in this common uh, folder. And then uh, this is a part of the um, of this returning table that we had after the, the analysis with R of the papers. So you can see that uh, in the parts with the under the green box with the keywords so we have a long list of keywords for example you can see absolute growth rate so if you are well the idea is that this uh, table should be consulted before start writing so each author knows his topic so if i want to to write about photosynthesis i check first so I order my table based on the, so I have first the papers that have the site the most, the term photosynthesis. So I can have a first hint of papers where to start reading before writing. Then um, has started the part of writing together. Writing together, uh, is nice and uh, needs uh, some more details to be decided. For example, the target journal, if we need to put some limits to the length of the paper, or if we start writing and uh, end up with a book chapter. So also these things uh, maybe needs to be at least uh, slightly defined at the beginning. So also each one knows how much to write in each section to avoid uh, spend some time and then have half of the text that cut it off because it's, it's too long. Then another suggestion could be also to try to assign to each topic of the review at least the one author that is mainly in charge of that. Usually uh, should be like self-assigning so each one knows his area of expertise and propose himself for writing that part. It, it worked, uh, for example, in our cases, because uh, in this case, it's, it's useful. Could it happen that you don't have no one expert or no one uh, that wants to write on a certain topic? What can be done uh, is to go directly. If we know someone expert in the field, we can try also to contact uh, to involve other people that uh, are involved in our topics. So, um, and can be done, uh, at least if uh, hoping that uh, our, uh, yeah, uh, that, that person will be happy to contribute to the paper. But uh, it's uh, for sure, it's a good strategy to advertise and to ask people to join, but uh, maybe our network cannot reach those people that we really need. So nothing, uh, so we, we are also welcome to go and to search people that we need for and to invite them to, to join us, to refuse, but also it's not mandatory, but to join and to help in writing our review. So to, to write together, some uh, advices could be, for example, to keep uh, one document for each, for each section. So to have different small files where people can work simultaneously in case it happens uh, on the same document, but not having too long uh, or too heavy files. Then, uh, of course, to use also track change mode uh, to check uh, who is writing, who is revising, uh, etc. And uh, also uh, to put some deadlines because uh, it's to, to my experience, uh, I found that it's necessary to put some deadlines. And uh, 
hopefully can work. Let's see. I have my deadline is the 15th of September, so I will tell you at the next <laughs> meeting. <laughs> and uh, after, so towards the end, so th these are actually what we have in plan, but still not uh, done. Of course, uh, I foresee to have uh, a part of revision uniforming the different writing styles yeah. because it, it's uh, having different people uh, working to if you can change the terminology and something like that. Checking if all the relevant literature has been cited. And also, um, before submission, doing self-revision in the sense that uh, different, uh, all the contributors check and revise the text of the others in order to have another check before the final submission. So. In conclusion, for sure, writing a review is challenging and coordinating the writing of a review is even more challenging. Because always, be, above all, because uh, uh, where is the time for review writing? So the problem is that, that usually if we, if we hope for proactivity and um, can happen that you don't have the return back without deadlines because uh, unfortunately this goes at the at the bottom of our to-do list because uh, we don't have deadlines and we don't have fundings and whatever reason but try to motivate your as coordinators your co-writers that having a review published really boosts the career, the age uh, index, uh, and everything. So it's something that really need. I, I mean, it's really positive on uh, on on our personal uh, uh, career, but also to the other people that afterwards we read the review. But so after motivation, uh, also the coordinators need. To, uh, to understand the contributors in the sense that uh, um, everyone can, it can be willing to, um, to be involved and to do the work assigned, but really needs to know what to do. So, for example, if there is articles to download, uh, tables to fill, articles to read, when you send the in reminder email just copy paste below the access link to the shared folder the password and uh, all the steps to do because if you have the time but it takes uh, one or two hours to understand what needs to be done and 10 minutes to do it probably you won't do it because you don't have time to spend uh, to, to to get all the previous email of six months ago so that's it i hope i and I, I hope it would be useful some of these small tips although very simple and uh, good good luck for all the review for the coordinators writers <laughs> and everything and thank you also for all the coordinators that are working in would you one that helped me with the different feedbacks to do this presentation of course so <laughs> thank you <laughs> Thank you very much, Melissa. Uh, are there in, any questions or? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa, for your presentation. I would like to ask you, uh, how can we manage, or what do you think about the managing of the literature seated, seated? Because I opted the same format as you said, so with different files for each one, and each, each contributor uses citation style, etc. But that's fine. I mean, in the final article, to have the bibliography complete, do you have a recommendation or something? I know it's a really um, focused question, but did yeah. you? No, until now, actually, I don't know. So yeah. I don't have because, any practice. Because I have con concern yeah. about that. Probably, I think, do it at the end, because yeah. it depends on the on the um, on the journal, which citations I ask you, and then uh, probably there will be a lot of patience so to check everything uh, yeah. one by one. I I was I'm yeah. worried for that. Yeah. 
I think the main problem there is that not the citation style. Yeah, because yeah, any yeah. any bibliography program, whatever, can can change that automatically. That's no problem. But to get the different information or different styles from different no, yeah, bibliographies, in, in different together. file, the same yeah. the, the same paper cited, yeah. but I don't want to have in the final bi 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 bibliography to have the same article twice or three times and mm -hmm. yeah to have a homogeneous without doing it manually or redoing redo all the citation for all uh, because some some people use mendeley some other use Lothar, or some other that yeah that that is the main problem yeah that's that's what the point right yeah. yeah thank you okay this is a uh, all of the uh, and uh, I would like to ask uh, Rafael uh, for his presentation. So, and uh, yes, Martin. Uh, asked me to present some uh, ways to analyze literature in more in a more automatic way, and uh, it's something that I have been in touch uh, doing a review for an article uh, for a journal, and uh, I've never seen it before. It was like a, a few months ago, or like a, time, a long time ago. I've seen this kind of analysis, and then I I search for how to do it. So the the idea is to just show how um, a simple uh, search on Scopus or Web of Science can lead us to a very good analysis of just like keywords or even the title of the articles. So we can, I would just present some, uh, what I did, it's just an example. We can uh, also, if the coordinators are willing or, or are um, interested, I can also help uh, doing this kind of analysis with the literature already collected um, from Scopus or, or the search engine that was used. So in this case, I just for example, I searched kiwi fruit and depth irrigation or water stress and irrigation management. Yeah, use this kind of words and uh, conditions and and all. And I downloaded from Scopus. It's a very nice um, Tool that we have, you can we can download the dot bib. That is a kind of bibli bibliographic um, file that contains all the um, all the information about the the paper. I will show you what are the um, the main or the topics that are included in this file. And then when I was looking at the keywords, because I will also discuss this because from Scopus we have the keywords from the authors, and we have the uh, indexed keywords that are completely different in some cases. So, and then I also decided some synonyms because in these two you can you can uh, apply. For example, I, for me in this example, it, it was not important if it was one species or another. So I used Actinia kinensis and Actinia deliciosa. All of them as a synonym of kiwi fruit. So whenever in a paper, Acnidia deliciosa or Acnidia chinensis was cited, was a keyword, it was, I transformed it to kiwi fruit. It's just an example, okay? In the case of uh, Apple, we can decide if it's Fuji or Gala or other, or Pink Lady, we can, we can decide if we are uh, considering all the types of, um, all the varieties, or if we are considering everyone as apple, it's just a consideration. And then, for example, irrigation management. I there there was many um, types of irrigation timing, irrigation scheduling. In this example, I considered all irrigation management, and then it takes up the number of key, uh, keywords up because there was like two of this, two of this, one of this, and one of this. So it's kind of impossible to see how um, 
really um, important um, uh, subject is. And if we use this kind of synonyms, we can uh, have a, a big group of keywords, which can be more interesting in our cases. Uh, so the BIP file, is it contains all of these uh, um, points in, in, the, in the file, including the affiliations, which is very interesting because we can see which country is the authors are coming from. If there are contributions between countries, papers published with country uh, authors from different countries, it's very. I think it's very interesting, and uh, also it includes author keywords and the keywords from the uh, indexing um, uh, engine like Scopus, for example. This is just one paper. It's just one one example. The author keywords are those uh, few ones in, on top, and these are the actual keywords from the uh, engine. Okay. So, for example, something that I chose in this example to eliminate was like uh, names of countries. I, it doesn't matter in as a keyword if it was in China. It doesn't matter. As a keyword, it was an example just uh, just to see some things. And um, for example, this is another article. We can see here on top the author keywords. You can see some keywords, and then you have the indexed keywords. So you have controlled terms and uh, uncontrolled terms. And it's a very um, I don't understand very well the algorithm that chooses these uh, keywords. But I, I, it, it, it probably comes from the up from the abstract or from the whole paper. I'm not sure, but either way, it's just an example. Okay, we can choose either to use only the keywords provided by the authors or the keywords uh, from the engine, the search engine. And then uh, this is the beginning of the analysis. Okay, this is um, the number of articles per year. In this case, then the search that I did. This is the most uh, productive countries, and you can see the SCP is the single country published uh, published paper, and the MCP is the multi country. So papers that are, have authors from different affiliations from different countries. For example, a paper from uh, a researcher from it Italy and New Zealand. They will count as the reddish color. Okay, so it, it's an analysis that can help us understand who is contributing more or less, and who is producing more or less in, in uh, scientific terms. And then we can also have this kind of plot that I think is very interesting, which shows the uh, the greatest um, connections between countries. So the uh, thicker lines. They represent a very good co collaboration and cooperation internationally. So I think it's very interesting. And you can see, for example, uh, Romania, it has a very thin line and it's the same color as Italy. And then Italy and New Zealand, and they are more or less disconnected from this group of India, Chile, China, Turkey. Okay, <clears throat> It's just an example. It's just a selection of the papers that I did automatically in uh, in Scopus. <coughs> and uh, this is another kind of uh, plot of graphic uh, visualization that, that we can obtain. And these are the keywords co-occurrences. So if one paper, two words are present in the same paper, they are closer and they are the bigger, it's the number of, of occurrences in the papers selected. So we can see here, that the algorithm that I use for the analysis, it chooses to two groups of keywords. And again, the thicker the line, the more uh, occurrences together in the same paper. I think this kind of uh, analysis can uh, help also uh, seeing like what is being mo most studied by uh, and, and the correlations that are studied more frequently. And again, we have another other types of analysis based on the keywords. This is like a dendrogram. 
and then we have a, a cluster analysis. And the one of the most interesting analysis that I that I think it, from this uh, analysis is this one that we see from the top twenty keywords when they are mo when they were most published. If it was the blue point here, it's the medium, the uh, yeah, the medium of the of the the years. So we can see. Um, for example, photosynthesis, carbon balance, and then we can see evapotranspiration from those papers that I selected. I'm not saying it's all the literature available, but from those papers, evapotranspiration is on top. It's like the newest uh, keyword in the in this kind of in this selection of papers that I did, which is I think can can be very interesting for the for uh, working group three for the the revisions in, uh, in, in general it's very interesting to see how interest yeah it's yeah, going exactly because of the climate <laughs> yes and then we also have this kind of plot which can uh, provide us like the keywords here and then which country use more these keywords and where they publish more the journals okay so, for example, we were talking uh, later that or earlier that we were uh, not including ACTA. Here, it was included, and we can see, for example, most of the papers are published in ACTA or Okay, and uh, some later or after some in agricultural water management, uh, New Zealand Journal of Crop and Horticultural Science, and other papers, or other journals. So, this is the kind of analysis that I think might be interesting for the coordinators from either uh, working group one or, or three and yeah uh, that's that's all thank you i, I hope it's interesting and yeah. if, Super if interesting. the coordinators are, are interested uh, i think the the main aspect is to have a big filter in the data in the in the article selected and then look at the keywords if there are some similar keywords we we have to establish the synonyms and uh, filter the, this in, uh, in some way. Yeah, that's that's all. Well, thank you, Rafael. How long does it take to work? Uh, it's the the greatest work is to have a look at the keywords. Mm -hmm. And it, what takes most most time is to have a look at the keywords. Because, for example, there are some uh, some of I didn't show here, but for example, um, photosynthesis. I took everything that is like photosynthetic rate or net photosynthesis, the diurnal net photosynthesis, nocturnal net photosynthesis, all photosynthesis, all words related to photosynthesis, and I uh, the synonym was photosynthesis. But, yeah, I understand. That. So this kind of uh, uh, broader look at the keywords takes a little a little bit of time but in general it's pretty much fast it's quite fast uh, yeah, nice. I, i'm struggling with how do you do that this sort of having all these different keywords getting it into one is that part of the program no or function no, that or? was my it, it was just an example that okay. was my my choice i chose to for example, consider all kind of species of kiwi fruit as kiwi as the word kiwi fruit. Yeah, that was my choice. The program doesn't. So it's basically done by hand. Yes, that's that's what I was explaining. It takes a longer, it takes a little bit longer, but it, there are some ways you can filter. For example, um, if I know, uh, I can have a look and, and filter the keywords by photo with ph, and then all the things. With containing photo will appear to me, and then I can select those that I want as photosynthesis. And I, I use, for example, photosynthetic traits. It's another keyword. I, I group uh, like group a group thing together also. So you then changed in the big file, basically. No, no, no. I, in the in the um, algorithms that I used, I just create a um, a vector saying. 
This word will be considered for all the following words. Okay, so in that case, go back there. So here, I created kiwi fruit yep. will be equal to a delicious, a and all the other possibilities. And there was, for example, just acnidia without saying the, the genus. And in my case, it was not interesting. I was interested in the word kiwi fruit. And it, maybe it's not even interesting having kiwi fruit because the search was already kiwi fruit. Maybe we could eliminate everything. You understand? We, we could eliminate kiwi fruit because this the paper will be already about kiwi fruit. Yeah. So it's it's just it, it's just an example. Uh, Omar, well, my question was exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> How did you manage to do the synonym and everything? I thought that there was some kind of program. You no. know. At the beginning, I had no. I haven't looked at the, all the the keywords. But then looking at some kind of some things, uh, I've, I've seen that there are very um, like a, a very varied uh, amount of uh, keywords that are very similar that could be grouped together. Yeah. For example, water use efficiency. There, are, there are some authors that put the, the hyphen between water and use, and some that don't. It's just a, a matter of uh, terminology. Would this uh, program allow us to uh, tackle some uh, additional information other than the keyboard? Yes, we can. We can use the same things. Uh, I haven't tried this because this would be uh, harder. I think we can do from the titles and also from the abstracts. But from the abstracts, we need to have a list of words like the, of, for, from that you need to remove the article and just focus on the main words from the article but it's possible either way it's possible and I, I don't think it's so hard because there are some kinds of already um, established lists of not useful like connection words or numbers that are written. So you need to manually exclude uh, the words more or less yeah want. yeah but I don't think it's quite a big problem it's, it's not so Yeah. This um, slide with years. The slide with uh, years. The the, uh, the output of the research topics. The keywords. Yeah, I think it's amazing because oh, uh, <laughs> this one. Yeah, yeah because uh, uh, I consider that mm -hmm. uh, with. Uh, Climate change and water scarcity, the topic it's uh, on the top. Mm -hmm. yeah, in uh, recent. Probably in certain way, it would be also 10, interesting to uh, make an analysis of, of the evolution of the, of the uh, say, water uh, research mm -hmm. for, yeah. the, for yeah. the crops. Probably interesting how, how it developed during the years yeah water was not in focus maybe in breeding uh, before was the yield or uh, disease now it's everything about water but the photosynthesis yeah but the photosynthesis, yeah, photosynthesis is yeah. like very early in the scientific yeah like in, anyway, in those papers if, if we would include more articles perhaps we would have another yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. It was just a selection yeah. of papers. And it would help for other uh, species? Yeah, you can do yeah. all, every research in Scopus that you can think of, you can do this kind of analysis. And this was only for the TV? Only for Kiwi. Yeah. That specific search that I did, like for Kiwi, deficit irrigation, or water so, stress, yeah. and uh, yeah. indicator. Just, yeah. Nice game. <laughs> Thank you very much, Raphael. So.
Well, Victor, by the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Martin. And now, once we have all the information in the table, and I do, and we also want to have some numbers and be able to analyze in a way that we can have some conclusions. So, yes, following one review that was published in two, uh, last year, in 2023, in almond trees by Miras Avalos, I kind of follow that idea to do something similar with some papers and apple production. So, if we just take some papers that have been published in the last or in the last 20 years, we have different results, different irrigation strategies, different cultivars. So it's kind of hard to compare all of them, mainly because sometimes with one strategy, which is like sustained irrigation by 50%, we have that the yield decrease. In others, the yield doesn't decrease, but it's the fruit quality. Sometimes there are no differences. So compare everything is kind of hard. And we can go and compare like one by one. So one paper is going to tell me one thing. So we can see uh, we work with relative values uh, trend, but it's it's not that easy to compare them. So we can say that one paper or one cultivar is more, for example, here, Granny Smith in green seems that has much negative values or like the, the relative yield decreases much more than other cultivars, but maybe it's because we have nothing here. So we don't know exactly how it works. So that can like having real conclusions based on that can be sometimes tricky. So, so if we just go with a really small amount of variables that we want to analyze, like as in this case, irrigation treatments, I am only going to select those treatments that they have a full irrigation treatment. So consider as control. Uh, we want to say control, or generally we, we are going to call it control, but the idea is that this treatment is not a, like a grower treatment, but it is defined, but they are irrigating 100% of the crop of our transpirates. So once we have this treatment, we can compare all those treatments that are deficit irrigation. So we can work with, in this case, we work with sustained, regulated, and partial irrigation. Also, in some papers, they work with no irrigation, so those four deficit irrigation strategies are always going to be compared with a full irrigation strategy. So based on that, then we also check if those papers that they have the full irrigation treatment and the deficit irrigation treatment, they provide a crop evapotranspiration. So unaccumulated crop evapotranspiration for the irrigation season and the rainfall also accumulated. So if we have the water applied and the environmental conditions, then we only need the yield as production. In this case, I only selected the yield, but the idea can be like do that also with all the quality parameters that can be interesting or working even instead of with the production, with the crop load, like, the, like in apples, it's a really important value. But sometimes it's not that easy to have those all that information in one paper. So when we have those four conditions, we can select from all the papers that we have, those that we actually can work with. And then apart from those, the information that we have about the cultivar, the age, the density or the soil type is going to help us. Apart from that, also the physiological response can be a really good, interesting factor as we should be able to characterize these deficit irrigation treatments according to some kind of parameters. So the intensity of the, or the severity of the treatment can also be considered. So from that really big um, Excel file that we are working with, we are gonna then, this is one example, with this paper. So here we have these irrigation, these irrigation treatments, cultivar the age, and here are the conditions. So for the same crop evapotranspiration and the rain of this year, this is the irrigation applied, uh, that's the addition of the irrigation and rain and the yields. So that's how the treatments were called, like sustained effect irrigation, regulated, and then severe or moderated, according to the water 
that they apply. Also, some conditions such as the physiological response of the trees or the stem water potential can help us to define uh, the severity of the irrigation treatment. So with that in mind, I just chose 12 papers that they have all the information that I was looking for. So that's the observation that each paper has and the, the irrigation treatments that they work with, the cultivar, the age, the density, the spacing, the soil type, the years that they consider, and the country that they did the, the trials. With that, then we can kind of select different conditions according to, for example, the soil type. Well, you can see that those that are yeah, in like light blue are like clay, silty, and those that are dark blue are sandy. So here we have a proportion of conditions similar to the cultivar. Here we have like dark blue gala, which is like light blue. Oh. So for 19 observations, that's like the, the table of with the average of values. We have here like the minimum of crop evapotranspiration for one experiment, the rain, the irrigation, because as I said, there were some treatments that were non-irrigated the crop evapotranspiration that they accomplished and the yield. So having this in mind, we have 23 observations of a treatment which is fully irrigated and the lowest value is for PRD only six. So for soil type, again, it was kind of balanced for soil type. That's why I chose this one. And um, with cultivar, I kind of look for the representation of several cultivars, but some of them as golden was like all the data comes from only one paper, while for Gala or for Fuji, there are several papers that can be combined. So in order to have an idea, when we directly compare the tons per hectare for the irrigation treatments, we can see how the RDI, even if it is severe, it's not that like it's not that different to the mean values of the full irrigated, while the sustained deficit irrigation has a much more negative value than the full irrigation. Why the severe sustained deficit irrigation has a mean value which is higher than the moderate? Well, because there are more papers with moderate than with severe. So that also can, can change our results. So we need to discuss and we need to check the values that we have. But when we like transform those values, which are like the value that we have to the relative yield to the full irrigation treatment, so it's a percentage. We here see that it makes much more sense. So the severe value has a much greater reduction than the moderate and the other values, even though they have a, a value below the fully irrigated, well, we can have an idea that they didn't penalize the production as much as the sustained deficit irrigation. If we do the same with the, those soil conditions, sandy and silty, here we observe how, well, like for silty, the severe deficit irrigation as previously was said, I think that by Alpha, that the, the soil can have a, a huge impact on the sustained deficit irrigation. So if you have a sandy soil, this treatment is going to reduce your yield much more than any other treatment. So again, if we do just the, like a comparison of the yield and the amount of water applied, that's the results that we have. But if we change it to a, like a reference value to the full irrigation, that's what we can see. So from 100%, uh, those values here, it's when you are over irrigating, you don't get a much higher perspective. So here we can have an idea of the amount of water that you should, or that we can say that you can like supply to the tree to kind of be in this area. As I said, here we are only comparing the yield, but we can do that also with the size of the apple, which is a major concern, or the crop load. So in order to follow with the next step, the idea is like once we have selected the papers to exactly choose those that they have a, a, a full irrigation or a controlled treatment and the crop evapotranspiration and rain in order to be able to know if the treatments that we have are, are accomplishing the water needs of the tree. And about like having the same idea, I just, thought that crop loads and fruit size can be interesting, but also maybe there are other variables that are interesting for apples, but also for the other treatments. So that's like the 
main idea of how I think that we can proceed in our, our whole sample group with the analysis. So that's all from my part and yeah, open to any discussion or any recommendation. And can you go to the previous slide? Yeah. No, no, the other one, that one. Oh, previous? No, 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 the one that with a relation with the oh, percentage, yeah. that one. So my idea with this was like to have a big picture of the published papers in different groups. So this is uh, in the y-axis you have relative to full irrigation. So you have yeah, to like the production, on. considering that the production of the, like in those treatments that are called full irrigation or control, they are, they have like the maximum production, like they are not going to have any reduction because of droughts. According to your equation, if the seasonal irrigation plus rain is 0%, you will still have a yield to full irrigation percentage of 17%. Is that right? Like for these selection of values, that's the, like, that's why I also, well, like in the one that, like the minimum value of rain that we have is always, I think, well, I don't know. It's just, uh, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've been a bit like a no no, no I, I completely the, understand the bad guy like here. A threshold, yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm playing are, the, no, but I'm playing the bad guy here. My point is that uh, just you have to be careful with the tr the type of uh, relation that you apply to these points because yeah. that can somehow bias how you see the the points. Okay. So according to you, if you use this asymptotic view, you if you sorry if you adjust this asymptotic curve, you see the points as asymptotic too. Maybe if you if you do like a two straight lines, yeah, yeah you might yeah. interpret the the, the yeah. data in, in a different way. Or even uh, uh, like uh, this relation, you can just eliminate the uh, the, the set. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you yeah yeah. yeah. But the, here the problem could be the x-axis. Uh, if you normalized it to to reference evapotranspiration, you'd get another view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Which could be more interesting, yeah. Yeah. right? But it's great. It's, it's no, really no, no, it's, I mean, we're all, all these right. things are because yeah, you made yeah. us think so much yeah, by yeah, showing yeah, us yeah, this, yeah. right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, the, the point is that, like, to be able to to compare and to kind of have that discussion here. <laughs> so yeah, well, like the idea was just like the well, I thought that this can make sense to uh, to include several papers with like to know that like in a low amount of information in order to kind of have a big picture but yeah and that's and another question is how do you in the soil part the soil graph uh -huh. I mean, it's a bit surprising that the the sandy soil produce uh in the regulated deficit irrigation apparently more than the silty one that's yeah, like the again, because it's not the same paper that's the tricky part because we are not comparing within the same conditions to uh, it's like a global. Okay, yeah, that is difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, it's, it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's the same with the it's just considering one factor or the other. Yeah, but like it's well, it's yeah, it's really tricky. And that's the one that was kind of better, but you can do that also considering like the claimants of the different trials, like the one that was done in, like the precipitation was really different in one or the other, so you can consider. So maybe the non-irrigated treatment uh, in one paper had much water than the sustained deficit irrigation in another one. Yeah, but yeah, one yeah, is called non-irrigated, yeah. so that's also a... Uh, yeah, well, there are some really questions which are connected to the conditions yeah. directly with the irrigation uh -huh. system. Yeah, right. Because the almost fully each time, not the yeah. full irrigation. So if you take the actual, yeah. Well, no, in this yeah. case, full irrigation yeah. needs uh, it's defined by like uh, irrigating 100% of the crop yes. of the yes. So the amount of water is not the same, but the definition of the treatment is the same. 
like just the just the things like they should be irrigated to satisfy proper of the fields. Well, um, now I would like to uh, describe in my present next presentation uh, the performance of uh, different apple field cultivars uh, and the conditions for sustainable use of deficit irrigation. I have tried to analyze uh, the first analysis of, of the literature we have uh, already processed in the tables. Uh, in order to find some some informations which would compare the, the uh, let's say productivity and the, the physiology and and some aspects uh, between different different cultivars. Uh, I have took the those twenty two papers with multiple uh, cultivars and was looking mainly for the uh, more often used uh, cultivars uh, and try to elaborate whether the uh, papers are focused on uh, uh, irrigation strategies or at least they uh, provide information about different levels of irrigation uh, are planted in the same rootstocks and uh, let's say uh, I have tried to consider also the uh, climatic and uh, orchard management factors uh, order to include the knowledge in certain borders. However, I was uh, the number of uh, the such studies are very low it would include uh, really considerable considerable information. So I was. Uh, I, I think we to define uh, the the direct uh, say performance of particular cultivar, we will need to uh, pick up also studies which are focused directly just for the cultivar in different conditions, because the comparison is not always possible. Uh, as not many studies are, are uh, focused on that. So, some general principles found in, in the literature. Um, in general, the more rigorous cultivars uh, usually favors the hydraulic efficiency against the safety. So, uh, that means that uh, they try to uh, open the stomata more uh, and uh, grows and uh, bears more fruits uh, and grows faster than the low, uh, low vigorous cultivar, which is uh, normal. But, but uh, the point is that uh, in some studies, uh, the idea was that uh, when we compare, for example, Gala and Fuji, uh, like in this one, uh, they, the authors expect that the main difference was uh, in the uh, time of the fruit growth. Uh, and because Fuji uh, was uh, hanging, uh, covering the fruits for a longer period, the, the difference between the peaks uh, is almost two months. Uh, they expect that the, the differences in the stomatal uh, conductance and uh, uh, water regime of the plants uh, was uh, mainly because of the crop load of the trees. Uh, 
In other, another studies done uh, by our team, we were uh, found that uh, the hydraulic conductivity and the accumulation of osmolids and the stomatal regulation uh, was uh, between Gala and the red Jona prints was uh, different, even when the uh, phenology of the trees was similar and also the crop load. So in a certain point, the gala uh, close, uh, let's say the stomata more earlier than, than, uh, than uh, red Jona prints. And, and the, uh, this influenced the, the efficiency of the growth of the, of the cultivars because in our conditions, uh, we didn't, uh, examinate um, or we didn't uh, get uh, too much dry periods uh, in the central Europe. Let's say the conditions are not that uh, worse than in Mediterranean conditions, but uh, still there we could observe some some differences in, in the water regime of the trees. Also, uh, Certainly, the, the main uh, point is that uh, those cultivars can uh, change their behaviors uh, according to the severity of the stress. So, in a, a, a more uh, dry conditions, uh, they will behave differently than uh, in a temperate temperate climate. Uh, also. Uh, it's also important to consider the orchard management and especially uh, the technical details also uh, of the orchard management, like pruning, uh, shaping of the trees, but also the irrigation system, because uh, in temperate uh, food zones, uh, we are used to use the irrigation by one line with uh, different distance of the drippers while in uh, Mediterranean and uh, hot climates, uh, there are usually two lines with really uh, narrow drippers. So uh, this covers a different amount of uh, the root zone uh, with, the, with the irrigation. Uh, if we compare uh, the Gala fruit, uh, trees with red Jona prints, we can see uh, that in uh, 2019, there was a really a bigger drop of the uh, stem water potential by red Jona prints than in Gala. Uh, and this is, this was also colored by the uh, less, um, less, <laughs> dry period in uh, 2021, but in uh, 2020, we had uh, really wet conditions where we get uh, really high precipitations and we irrigated really, really seldom. You can see that the first year was really dry and we get really, really uh, dry soil conditions. Instead of that, uh, in 2021, we just had short uh, uh, growth period, uh, even for, uh, for example, two weeks, and then the rain yes. come again. Well, uh, from the vessel diameters, we can see that uh, during the um, uh, Laboratory analysis in uh, 2020, we found differences in vessel diameters according to the, especially to the irrigation, but uh, the xylem potential by uh, when we uh, try to um, simulate uh, and 50% and 12% uh, hydraulic uh, loss of, of hydraulic conductivity, we can see uh, quite uh, large differences between uh, the cultivars as well as uh, between the uh, irrigation system. 
uh, irrigation of the trees. They were uh, non-irrigated or fully irrigated uh, according to the calculated evapotranspiration. If we look up on the uh, concentration of some uh, solutes, we can see that uh, glucose, sucrose, and sorbitol were more concentrated in uh, gala uh, leaks than in regional prints. The, the metabolism is also uh, influenced. If we compare the productivity of the trees, here it is interesting because uh, Gala had uh, in the 2019, uh, uh, it was the hot and dry year, as I have uh, explained before. Uh, when we got uh, approximately, uh, we got, got also uh, relatively high yields per tree. And you can see that uh, with uh, GALA, if we compare different um, irrigation amounts, it, this was without irrigation, this was uh, comparable with sustainable irrigation for 50% of the amount of evapotranspiration. This was for 75% and this was for 100%. This was, it, these values are coming from irrigation where, where we applied 200%, but uh, in a more distant uh, date. So uh, once we applied 200% uh, of the evapotranspiration and one we didn't apply the irrigation. And uh, these are the regulated deficit irrigation. And you can see that the uh, proportion of the classes between the, between the uh, root size uh, were different in almost a similar uh, root set or yield. Um, and it was worse in uh, for Gala with uh, non-irrigated trees and also low with uh, with trees uh, irrigated for 50%. Uh, and for those which uh, got more uh, water. In the case of air regulated deficit irrigation uh, with, uh, without, uh, <coughs> between those two, uh, there was a certain regulation in the fruit set. Uh, we picked more fruits in RDE A. Uh, but uh, in this case, we, we got a higher higher um, higher crop load so uh, also the fruits uh, size was affected uh, in case of um, red Jonah prints uh, we got relatively good results even with ATC 50 and uh, you can see that the, the cultivar have sustained higher higher yields without uh, affecting too much uh, the proportion of the, of the root size. Well, again, the difference is only with the ATC 75, which was uh, similar, which got similar result uh, with uh, non-irrigated uh, treatment because of a higher, we expect that this the higher uh, yield was the, the reason. So if we consider the, uh, the root system, uh, it is even uh, important to know whether we are irrigating just the part of the uh, root system or the whole root system at once, because uh, if you want to sustain uh, deficit irrigation and we will cut let's say uh 50 percent of the of the water we must know that if we uh do if we irrigate just the half of the uh, root system we are already uh, applying a deficit so this is really important to to consider uh also this this factor uh in in the in the 
comparison. Well, it, it, in our country, uh, in a lot of um, a lot of case uh, of farms, we uh, use one drip line with uh, distance of uh, drippers by one meter, which uh, usually covers just a third uh, of the of the expected zone for the route. And these systems are uh, quite old uh, because in earlier uh, decades uh, the water scarcity was not that severe, and the irrigation was planned just to uh, supplement the difference between between the, the rainfall and the evapotranspiration. But uh, in nowadays uh, such such uh, settings uh, when we irrigate uh, with, with uh, such amount of uh, irrigation and uh, severe dry, dry, uh, periods are occurring, you are unable to uh, unable to uh, irrigate fully the, the trees even when you uh, don't use any uh, deficit irrigation strategy. So if you conclude this, um, according to the literature uh, I was uh, reading, uh, is, uh, we can say that the irrigation strategy of regulated deficit irrigation and continuous deficit irrigation is feasible for temperate climates and allows uh, water saving about 25% uh, for apples. Uh, in, certain uh, management conditions. Uh, however, for uh, Mediterranean climates, uh, they often prefer uh, more uh, partial root zone drying and uh, the de continuous deficit irrigation has usually uh, quite, can be affected and, uh, and uh, by the growth, and so it's not really preferred uh, in these countries. Uh, regular deficit irrigation strategies are in these uh, plants uh, feasible, but uh, they uh, probably will need uh, more strict rules. We consider the technical specifics. Uh, we can say that the Distance between the drip emitters and drip lines, uh, or considering the uh, root zone wetted by the irrigation, needs to be considered um, for the for the regulated deficit irrigation. The moisture regime can be uh, 15 percent of the evapotranspiration during the growing phase between the during the second uh, uh, stage of the fruit growth, let's say, that means uh, from the uh, end of the uh, cell division until, let's say, midsummer. Um, if uh, at least in, in the temperate uh, conditions, uh, we also found that. Uh, it is better to not exceed uh, the 25% of the uh, deficit of the annual evapotranspiration, while the soil moisture should, uh, in the wetted part, should not uh, go down below the 70 to 75% of the um, available soil water capacity. And uh, in the wet period, while in the dry period, it should not uh, go under 60%. Uh, moreover, we should stop the uh, regulated deficit irrigation if the uh, soil uh, dries too much or uh, even the soil, which is, uh, which is not irrigated, the part of the roots uh, which are not irrigated, if this part is uh, considerable and uh, water content there 
drops under 50 percent, we, we should uh, definitely start with the, with the regulatory deficit irrigation. Some cultivar specifics. Uh, when we consider the Gala variety uh, and the red Jonah prints, we found that uh, it is really important to uh, maintain uh, optimal fruit set, which is uh, for Gala uh, approximately about uh, 120 and 130 fruits per tree. If we have um, distance one meter within the row and, and the trees are approximately three meters high. Uh, while in the for red Jonah prints, we uh, obtain good data uh, with higher fruit crop load, uh, approximately about 150 to 160 uh, fruits per tree because. Uh, Red Jonah Prince also bears a larger fruit. We can also man, maintain a higher fruit set, but uh, there is a risk that you uh, obtain optimal fruit size, but, but uh, the, this cultivar has problems with uh, alternating bearing. So if you uh, left uh, too much fruits, uh, you can uh, obtain uh, problems with uh, flowering and flower set in the next year. <clears throat> if we, uh, if I should mention some gaps in the literature, there is a low, quite low homogeneity among the trials in the li literature. There is uh, still lack of many information uh, to build up uh, really detailed uh, consideration about the uh, need of the of the uh, of this fruit species and of this cultivar, so uh, we will likely need to consider more uh, articles, and and uh, we will see whether we will be more successful to to go further. Otherwise, we will need to build up also on single cultivar studies. Well. It's almost all. Do you have any questions or uh, comments? I have tried to uh, analyze just uh, um, a part of the lit obtained literature. So these are just uh, results which are which are partial or uh, are let's say preliminary. Yes, please. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Jane. Uh, this is for the slide of comparison of uh, varieties, I think. Okay. Uh, this one? No. Perhaps. Previous comparison of varieties. Yeah. So, culture, sorry. Uh, no, no. Uh, yeah, this one. This one. Yeah. Uh, the title is comparison of cultures. What I think. Comparison uh, the title is always the same. Spacing. So. Uh, sorry. You want this one? No, no. Later, later. 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 Yes. No, later. Okay, so, okay. You you compare the uh, no, 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 no. This is just for the this is just for the distribution ah, okay. of the water. Okay. Uh, this is not for comparing the cultivars. We were uh, working with uh, this system yeah. in both of the cultivar. And for the last slide, I think the one. I'm sorry for the confusion. Okay, I I can't understand the last. This one. No, the last one. Right. Yeah. Okay. The second the low number of studies of focus on comparison among different cultures. Yeah, uh, the, just just I I think just two or three studies from the 22 were uh, focused really on comparison of the um, let's say effect of the cultivar and the and its physiology and uh, productivity. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of the studies were. Um, Containing several cultivars, but they were not directly compared for the irrigation amounts and irrigation uh, the system of the irrigation. Do we prefer 
study on uh, different cultures in one study or that's uh, it would be know? nice to have more exp uh, more uh, examples for for comparing the, these effects in different conditions yeah. as orchard conditions or as uh, um, climate conditions because uh, from a low number of studies, it's hard to uh, make some really robust conclusion. Mm -hmm. So let's say I have tried to pick up those information which were uh, interesting and which were uh, considered by the by the uh, papers, but uh, still we cannot make a bright conclusion from that. In those studies that they that uh, you have found uh, that they comparing cultures, is it a big difference in uh, the uh, water requirements among the cultivars? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say big, uh, but uh, let's say uh, if we would put, uh, you know, the problem is uh, also that. Um, the confidence among the, these results is a uh, bit uh, tight because uh, we compare uh, those cultivars in different conditions. I expect that they will uh, behave, differently. behave differently. So I can explain some results for direct conditions, but uh, I cannot generalize it uh, for now uh, among let's say, uh, different conditions. Not enough, I have not enough information we need okay. to search for, for further information. But it would be interesting to see. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Um, I have a question, it's more like uh, posted, uh, related to this last slide. Is um, how can uh, we, like we as researchers, we are always, always like pushed to do groundbreaking research, like, and then we we also need this kind of experiments and publish publications. Like, if you send some kind of this kind of publication to agricultural water management, even if you do two, three, four years of research, they will probably say oh, we already have this kind of publication published, so that's not so interesting. How can we manage like? First, the funding agencies, and then the the uh, the journals to accept it, yeah. because <laughs> we we need this kind of like long term, uh, also long term effect of irrigation. Probably one way for getting money, uh, at least in our institute, we have. Try to uh, because we have uh, some money uh, for the development of the organization, so uh, we are obliged to to do some research for, for uh, those money. But uh, the budget is, let's say, not too, too bright. <laughs> so uh, otherwise, it, it's always better to have directly on um, projects dedicated to, to this to this topic. Can imagine that it's oh, yeah. not that easy to uh, About publications, I don't know, but I think those publications does not need to be uh, published always in the top high uh, papers or uh, journals. But uh, anyway, as you have said, uh, we need more people. In order to be able to generalize some uh, more closely related information, not that easy to be without a close experience. Well, any other questions? Nothing. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, you can. Uh, we will have uh, 30 minutes of uh, yes. break. After interesting the different ways of working. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
pièce de le de toute forme. Mm. Oh, I was No, no, claro, sí, sí. No, sí, sí, sí. Sí, sí, es la Sí, no, no, el problema. O sea, yo creo que lo miraré. Y es que alguien me dice que es 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 que Claro, en este caso no salía, no salía con el suelo, como que mirara la mitad y la mitad del suelo, como que mirara el suelo arenoso, porque está sin nada, el suelo, por ambiente, nosotros que teníamos en la... Yeah, 
one or two years later in the same period there was a this is so this is so Character <laughs> 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 There is a No, no, maybe some and then in this case it's me that I need to make the decisions. And sometimes it's really here because it's nice. My decisions and anything yet is a little bit easy to kind of restart or change. It's done and it's not done. Preparing number two is being bad. So it's discussing the last point. Yeah. Because otherwise. No, but also, yes, the most important thing is that 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 Yeah, I know this one. I'm not. Yeah, 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 I'm not. Yeah,
There's different methods for that. Some people use like the lower, just the lower ones that make an envelope. Yeah. Well, the upper ones that make an envelope, but there's different ways of looking at data like that and, and, and deciding where the push on line is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, I think that's the same yeah. as what we yeah. 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 But, but you're right. Too, too many relationships, or, or just the rise and then something steady may be more correct. Yeah. I didn't want to. Uh, I no, yeah, yeah. no, but once, once you have that data, you can do those are again really easy to do in different ways because uh, it gets you biased on the data. You start to see the data. yeah, yeah, like in the Mediterranean, yeah, 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 Okay,
Can continue. So the next presentation is from Clara Sankova. She will be focused on the effects of uh, rootstock on apple trees, water environment. So for itself. Thank you. So good afternoon. My name is uh, Clara Skankova. I'm working with Martin in the Research and Breeding Institute in Holhousek, and I prepared the presentation uh, with the theme of effect of rootstock on apple trees, water requirements. Uh, for the presentation, I have used uh, 23 references from the uh, shared file that uh, Martin showed you in, in his presentation that was prepared by the participants. 
uh, it was the references with two and more different apple stocks. Uh, among these studies, there was there were uh, 17 field studies and seven pot studies. One was combining uh, both varieties of planting. Uh, mostly there were assessed uh, the dwarfing and semi-dwarfing rootstocks. Uh, the main uh, frequent rootstock yeah, was the PM9. It was uh, 10 times in, in the studies and 26 was six times, five times, um, 106. P9 was five times, uh, four times, and so on. There are other uh, other studies with with uh, with the different apple rootstocks, and uh, their origin of breeding is from United Kingdom, Russia, USA, Czechia, and Germany. Uh, the treatments uh, in the in the studies were mainly the deficit irrigation. Sometimes it was just the uh, limited amount of, of water that was uh, that was uh, given to the plants. It was not some specific uh, irrigation uh, irrigation regime. Uh, the special root zone drying and the regulated deficit irrigation I found uh, just in two or four, two or three uh, studies. So mainly it was just uh, just uh, some some kind of deficit. Uh, the measurements used were mainly the water potentials, tomato conductance, hydraulic conductivity, and the leaf area that uh, were assessed with these rootstocks. Uh, the main part of the of the planting the apple trees is the water content and the water uptake. And uh, in the study of uh, Yupa and uh, uh, collective, uh, they uh, were assessing the dwarfing rootstocks and uh, invigorated rootstocks, and they found that in the dwarf there's uh, less less water uh, reserves uh, in the in the uh, in the tree. And there, in the graph, you can see the daily chunk circumference variation, which is higher in the in invigorated rootstock, and in the dwarf it's it's a uh, smaller. The variation. Uh, it's also proportional to the to the tree size. Uh, from from the same study, they also were uh, using the leaf water potential and stomatal conductance. Here you can see also the dwarf and invigorated rootstock. Uh, these these rootstocks uh, are the check ones that were that were used. It was uh, in Holovose. And uh, in the dwarfing rootstock, you can see that uh, the water potential and also the stomatal conductance was lower. And uh, at, at the end of the season, there you can see that the water potential was higher, but the stomatal conductance was was lower, and the different difference uh, in some terms was was not significant. Uh, so uh, there was significant. Uh, Effect of the rootstock and of the date, but uh, their their mm. interaction was not not significant. Uh, there's other study that was uh, coping with the leaf potential. Uh, there are uh, the uh, extremely dwarfing M27 rootstock M9 as a dwarfing and uh, semi dwarfing and vigorous rootstock, and you can see that the leaf potential is really really different for for these rootstocks at the vigorous ones there is uh, the very very uh, sharp uh, low lower of uh, decrease yeah this is, <laughs> thank you decrease of the leaf water potential and uh, it was uh, after the water shortage that this uh, that is here signed as the triangle. And in the in the extreme dwarfing and the dwarfing roots, the the, uh, the decrease was was not so so high. So you can see that there is also very big difference between between the well watered and the uh, drought treatment. For the stomata characteristic uh, in the study. Sue and his colleagues, uh, they found that uh, for the dwarfing rootstock, there is a significantly 
higher density of the of the stomata. You can see it in with M9, G9, and G935 that they have diff, uh, statistically significantly uh, higher stomatal density, but the the size of the of the stomata was lower or smaller for for these rootstocks, and uh, in the uh, in the average area of uh, stomata per the per the leaf area, there were found no differences. So with the with the dwarfing rootstocks, they have uh, they have smaller stomata but in higher density. So that's the way how they can cope with the uh, with the stress uh, caused by the by the drop. Uh, with the hydraulic conductivity, uh, there was different, uh, different found differences for the dwarfing. It was M27 again, semi dwarfing M9 and semi regulars M106. There was found different, uh, different uh, values for the hydraulic conductivity. You can see that in the dwarfing rootstocks, uh, there is the higher, there was the higher. Uh, Conductivity found for the stay on stem mm -hmm. and uh, for the semi vigorous rootstock, there were not so uh, not so wide differences between different uh, parts of the of the trees. Uh, they also used the the rootstock stem uh, part of the graft tissue and part of the sion stem for the for the analyzing of the hydraulic conductivity. And you can see that the differences from the from the rootstock uh, stem is not so uh, big. But when they uh, use the uh, specific conductivity expressed as the resistivity of uh, of the stem, there you can see that for the dwarfing and semi dwarfing rootstocks, they found that uh, the uh, the value is really higher than in the other parts of the of the stem or in the other parts of the uh, plant, so it means that uh, with uh, grafting rootstocks, there are some hydraulic limitation by the graft tissue. So mainly in this part, uh, or probably in this part, there is different anatomy, and they uh, they have to cope with uh, with these with these limitations. In the uh, semi this this trend was just lower. For the root systems, uh, Atkinson and his colleagues, they uh, measured the length of the coarse and fine roots. Uh, for the for the M9, uh, with the routing treatment, which is the, the C treatment, you can see that for the coarse roots, it uh, made a short shorter coarse roots and for the fine roots it uh, had the effect that there were longer longer fine roots and uh, there are also the AR uh, two AR uh, rootstocks that are also also uh, dwarfing but they have a larger root system and for them the, the results were, were different not uh, not uh, the droughting uh, treatment not have the didn't have the same effect as for the M9, so it's also dependent on the physiology of uh, of different rootstocks. We probably cannot uh, group dwarfing rootstocks just to the one group and tell that they have uh, longer roots, uh, depending on on treatment and so on. For the, for the uh, vigorous treatment, like M26 and M. 111, uh, there were for M26. It's not working. For M26, there was uh, longer coarse line uh, roots uh, in the droughting treatment, and also for the fine roots, uh, it has the, the effect that the roots, that it produces more roots. Uh, in the conclusion, uh, there are uh, probably different strategies of developing and invigorating rootstocks uh, uh, with the coping with the drought stress. 
uh, for the developing rootstock, the authors uh, stated that they, that they seem to regulate uh, the water regime more promptly. My, uh, might it's because of the of the stomata density. I didn't tell you that the stomata density was uh, assessed on the Ambrosia uh, variety. So it was not just the rootstock, but it was uh, in in the combination with the with the variety and. Uh, for the dwarf and rootstock, they also stated that they terminate the growth earlier in dry condition. Uh, for the invigorated rootstock, they have higher water consumption, so it probably leads to wider vessels and larger stomata. Uh, hydraulic restrictions are uh, in the dwarf and rootstocks due to different vessels ratio in and in rootstock and uh, as you see, uh, so